Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Now we move to port reforms. We're talking reforms a lot today. Uh, we move to the ports. The impact of a well-developed and properly managed port manifests in efficiency and contributes significantly to the growth and development of the national economy. Conversely, poorly developed and badly managed ports often create supply chain bottlenecks, attract higher charges and operating costs to the detriment of local and international trade, thereby impacting ne negatively on the economy. It's my pleasure to welcome the Director General, Ship Owners Association, Engineer Najuno Obuagu. Good morning. Good morning, madam. We also have in the studio the, um, a member of the Presidential, Presidential Committee on Customs Reforms, Mr. Loki Amiewero. Thank you very Good morning. Much. Yeah. And uh, we have a maritime expert, Mr. Tunde Keshinru. Good morning. Good morning. Um, let me begin with the maritime expert, because you are likely to be a neutral person. <laughs> Talk us through the business of getting goods through our ports right now. Okay. Bring Briefly. Okay, bringing goods in into Nigeria warranted to place an order with your overseas supplier. The overseas supplier will arrange through his warehouse uh, appointing a forwarder and bring the cargo to the port. Of course, the cargo must be booked. Appointing a forwarder a over over there. overseas yes. to do the documentation and local logistics over there mm -hmm. to bring the goods to the port of loading. And before that, the cargo must have been booked with a carrier, which is a shipping line. Now, the shipping line, depending on where the origin is, are established uh, transport modules to Nigeria. That's how the goods come to arrive at Nigeria. Upon arrival in Nigeria, prior to the arrival of the goods, with the ships coming in, the ship in Nigeria is expected to register its inward movement with the Nigerian Port Authority as the owner of the port. And Nigeria Port Authority, having concession is uh, port terminals to private operators, now known as private operators in, in, in the port industry. The private operators are the ones directly controlling the cargo handling side of the port activity. So the next stage is engaging the, directly, the ship owner now engages directly with the port terminal operator upon which the terms are agreed and the vessel is nominated to a particular port. Of course, the Nigerian Port Authority, by virtue of the previous experience, coordinates the movement of port into Nigerian waterways. So on arrival of the ship into Nigerian uh, waterways, the Nigerian port uh, pilot, having uh, booked and rebatted the vessel in terms of uh, allocation of bags mm. to the designated terminal, bringing the vessel to the designated terminal. The okay. designated terminal now walk the ship with their stevedoring uh, arrangement to discharge that particular vessel, that particular cargo, and where there is a uh, export to be loaded, load uh, same out of Nigeria. And now, takes off. And takes off. Yeah. Of course, the cargo is now at a resting place, which is a terminal yard area. The importer, through his clearing agent, is now expected to, you know, formalize the uh, cargo clearance process. Of course, before arrival of cargo, having been shipped over uh, from overseas origin, the importer begins the documentation with Nigerian customs by arranging his... Uh, even uh, before the uh, vessel even, arrives, yeah, right? Even the main, before you even place the order, the Nigerian regulations, the import regulations, requires you to open a form, which is a CBN form, to the dealer banks, through the banks. And that sort of documents the, you know, the inward movement of the cargo. Okay. Through that, government is able to, you know, go, you know, able to, or CBN is able to have a view, the forex requirement of the cargo, yes. the uh, uh, characteristics of cargo by going through other regulatory agencies, if it is regulated cargo mm -hmm. or if it's not. And upon that, the cargo prior arrival is issued with Nigerian customs, having approved the form with what is called port uh, pre-arrival uh, document, pre-arrival okay. report. Okay. That defines the duty to be paid to Nigerian government and upon which the cargo is cleared through the Nigerian so Okay. Mr. Wago. That sounds pretty straightforward, even though it seems like a long process from when the ship takes off over there and the consignee gets the goods here. It sounds pretty straightforward. The steps are this follows this, follows this, follows that. So why is it that sh 
importers prefer to use other ports, ports in Cotonou, for instance, ports in Ghana. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Alero. Yes, in an ideal situation, it's pretty straightforward, like you said. Unfortunately, Nigeria has no maritime character. Everybody does whatever I like. What do you mean maritime character? We are supposed to be a maritime nation. Every maritime nation has a maritime character. Mm -hmm. They have a law, there's Merchant Shipping Act, there's MPA Act, there's Customs Act, this thing, the Master Act, all aggregates to ensure that our port operates very efficiently, seamlessly, without any problem. But this lack of maritime character, which is lack of government will, if you like. So, you just mentioned Kotonu. Look at this scenario, where Nigerian petroleum importers are feeding Kotonu with all the revenue that should accrue to Nigerian government. Almost all the petroleum products will bring land in Kotonu, and then they are issuing bill of lading, which is illegal. That, all those things are illegal trade. Bill of lading on vessels, which they call mother and daughter vessels, going to take off this cargo to Nigeria. What is the reason the central bank played into the hand of these marketers? Because they said if they bring the cargo direct to Nigeria, central bank said they will pay them in the Naira equivalent. So they want to be paid in dollars. So they do that. Oh. Look at what custom has done now. If you go to Kotonu, you see car littered. All the Lebanese importers handling Kotonu business, they have all run away. Just because Kotonu has stopped this flying in of cars. So the revenues otherwise that will come to Nigeria is a problem. MPI has its own problem. There's no doubt about that. A lot of bottleneck. Like he said, have you brought your ship uh, notice of arrival and all that? Have they allocated pilot to you? Have they allocated bat? Of course, the, all this we are saying but the boils down to corruption. So it's not that straightforward. Then you go to custom. He, I'm sure Lucky will give you the best on that. Examination, physical. I'm a marina. I've said all over the whole world. You don't see where custom is entering container to go and remove carton and all that. They have a system where containers or cargoes are scanned. If they notice anything on towards you go back. All you see abroad is a tanker, a trailer coming in with a paper at the gate. Only one man is there. He opens his window, he collects the paper, he looks at it, he looks at your vehicle, he, look, he gives you back, the trailer goes in. And he already has where that container or cargo is located. He goes there, they put it, he comes back the same way. Ours is delay upon delay upon delay. We forget that. You forget that Nigeria is a member of IMO. There's what we call trade facilitation. Nobody pays attention to trade facilitation. So it's straightforward as you described, but it is not straightforward in Nigeria. Okay. So okay. we have to pay three annos okay. to Mr. get Bagu. things done. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll just take a short break, come back and continue this very interesting conversation. The rate of piracy has dropped to its barest minimum because we've been able to build on interagency cooperation and coordination and we've also been able to build a network with our regional partners. Aside from that, in terms of maritime safety, the number of detentions of vessels calling at our ports have reduced because people are now, now more aware that we have zero tolerance for substandard vessels. Um, we have also conducted more inspections than in previous years. We have effectively implemented the cabotage act, which has led to a lot of improvement in terms of uh, our people who work on board local vessels, in terms of flagging of vessels, and in terms of ownership of uh, vessels. We are about to break another ground by being the first to disburse the cabotage vessel financing fund. We have in excess of $100 million in the cabotage fund, and that what we are doing is to review the guidelines. As soon as we review the guidelines, we are able to process applications for those who want to assess the 
cabotage vessel financing fund so that they can help Nigerians build capacity in terms of uh, vessel acquisition so that they become better players in the industry. Mind you, the Ministry of Transportation is also pursuing the re-establishment of the national fleet, this time uh, driven by the private sector, and we're giving total support to that initiative, and we're accomplishing a lot of results.